On today's video, we're going to be working on this AC. Make sure that your thermostat is set to cool and auto, and then you're basically just going to drop the set point. So we have the set point here at 70. Next, what I always do is I come here and I listen for the blower to make sure that it's operational or not. At this point, we confirmed the blower is functioning, the thermostat is set, so now we're going to go outside and inspect our condensing unit. Remove our access panel. With the panel open, we're going to just do a basic inspection of our components. I can see here that I do have 24 volts going to my contactor on the low voltage side. So I, what I want to do is, because it's engaged, I want to make sure that we just have the proper readings here. Here I have my multimeter set to AC voltage. And you can see I connected my clips to both of my leads coming from my thermostat. And I do have the necessary voltage. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a voltage reading here at the incoming of the contactor. This is the leads that actually come in from my disconnect here on the wall. Right now, I'm showing no voltage. Whenever we're dealing specifically with voltage issues, you always want to come and check the breaker. A lot of times if you're having issues with voltage going to your disconnect, your disconnect feeding to your contactor, you're going to want to check your breaker. A lot of times it'll be tripped for whatever reason. Um, so right now, this doesn't appear to be tripped. We're just going to turn it off, turn it back on, and then we'll check our voltage reading. Okay, so I'm still not getting any voltage coming from my disconnect to my contactor. All right, what I want to do is I always like to keep just extra tools with me. So this is giving me a voltage reading. Again, as I said, you always want to be careful when you're dealing with electrical work. Obviously, you can see when I go here, I'm looking for a reading of 240 volts. I'm not getting my reading. But when I go from one leg to ground, I get 120 volts here. As I move my lead, I get 120 volts here. What I'm do is I'm going to pull my disconnect. And that should remove power to my contactor. So I am getting power from my disconnect. You can see here my line is dead. So here I don't have any voltage. Move our leads over. And you can see I do not have any voltage. The reason I don't have voltage is because I removed my disconnect, which feeds the power to my contactor. I put my disconnect back in, my fuse. What's interesting to me is when you look at this, you can see it's brand new, which tells me somebody was working on the system. Here I'm looking inside, nothing looks burnt. Now we disconnect back in. Right now I'm just testing, so I do have voltage coming through the line. Here I don't have voltage. I move my lead over, you can see here, still having the same issue. Now what we're going to do is we're going to test our disconnect here. Usually the neutral is going to be the last wire coming in and you should have your line and then your load and your load. So here I have my line coming in to my neutral, I have 245 volts. Now I'm doing load and neutral. Not getting any voltage there. Let's move it over. I have 120 volts here. At this point, obviously I have 240 volts coming from my breaker, my line and my neutral. And that indicates to me that the problem is going to be here behind the panel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the breaker off. And then I'll show you here just for demonstration purposes. I should not have power coming in on my line and my neutral. Right now I have my line and my neutral. 
and I have 245 volts. If I was having a problem with my breaker, here I'm going to turn off the power. Here I'm going to turn off the power. You can see here I lost voltage. If you were to work this problem in your mind, we took our reading here at our contactor. I'm not getting the proper voltage. If I test each leg, I'm only getting 120 volts when I test it to ground. At this point, if I was losing half a leg, I would not be getting 240 volts here. I'd only be getting 120. Because this looks new, this tells me that this was already an issue. Whoever was working on it, they obviously didn't fix the problem. Right now, our breaker is off. I do not have any voltage coming here to my disconnect. Again, just for safety, you always want to check. I do not have voltage. Here you can already see the problem. This line is very loose. And what happens, whoever was working on this condensing unit, most likely when they were working on the fan, they kept pulling the disconnect and probably were a little too abrasive with it. And that's what caused it to loosen. Now that we have our leads in, we're going to go ahead and flip the breaker back on. So here I have my 240 volts. We'll move it over to test our load. You see now I do have 120 volts. Test the other one. Make sure you put your plate cover back on. Right now I have my multimeter set up. This is gonna be at my contactor. This will be incoming voltage. So I'm gonna plug in the disconnect right now and then I'm going to see if we have the proper voltage needed. Right now I'm gonna plug it in. You can see right away the fan motor didn't want to start up right away. You see we do have the necessary voltage. So at this point, the fan motor is going to have to be replaced. I think what happened was it wasn't properly running. Probably what happened initially was it started to heat up or overheat. This was causing problems with the system running efficiently. Here, whoever worked on it, they just replaced the capacitor, which kind of bought it a little bit of time. When they were probably taking it out and putting it in and troubleshooting, that wire, that lead must have gotten loose behind the fuse. If for some reason we weren't getting the proper voltage at our lines behind the disconnect panel, what we would do at this point is we would basically just pull off the electrical panel and we would basically take our multimeter and just test the two leads to see if we had 240 volts coming at the breaker. Usually if you put your leads, if you have 120 volts, you'll at that point realize that the breaker is not working or if the breaker is tripped, you would have to replace it. I do have a video posted on my channel in regards to testing, troubleshooting, and replacing your circuit breaker. If this video was a help, if it was informational, please subscribe.